morning to everybody. Namaste. Welcome. We started with exercise two. Observing the body by the self. And it's not just observing the body. Now we'll be observing the self like we were doing before. And at the same time, we'll also be observing the body. And in fact, we'll be observing this interaction that is happening between the self and the body. And then with that, we will also be seeing outside the interaction of the body and the self with the rest of the environment. And all this is possible at the same time. That potential is there in the self. This is what we were discussing yesterday. And like with exercise one, exercise two also, we mentioned that this is one way. There are many methods of looking within and trying to see things the way they are, not as we may perceive them right now, but the reality, the way it is. This is one way, not the only way. The steps that are mentioned in these exercises, like with exercise one, here also we have some steps. This is one possible set of steps. It's not the only set of steps. So you are free to increase the number of steps in between if you feel the need or you can club a couple of steps together and um, do this exercise in less steps eventually. But to start with, these steps have been provided so that they can be of use to you so that they may help you in this process of looking within. So to begin with, we can start with each step the way it is given. And then later, if we feel the need, we can also decrease these number of steps once we are uh, practically doing these exercises on a regular basis. So that can be done. Next slide, please. We started with this familiar chart that we have all seen again and again in the five-day online workshop, in the face-to-face -face workshops and so on. And we were talking about how the self and the body, though we spoke of the needs, the fulfillment, the activity, the response in the workshops. And we may have it as information. Now our task is to try and directly observe it within ourselves. So when we say that the need of the self is for happiness, And it has to do with feeling. Now you can see it directly within yourself. That when you have the right feeling, you are calm, you are comfortable, you are happy. And the moment that you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable, you are disturbed. You are in contradiction. You are unhappy. So when we directly observe this, we can see that the need of the self for happiness is fulfilled by the right feeling. Right feeling as in the feeling that is naturally acceptable to us. And because this need in the self is a continuous need, I want to be happy in continuity all the time. 
So I need to have this right feeling all the time. For that, I need to understand everything in this existence. I need to understand myself. I need to understand the body. And the body is one material unit. Similarly, I need to understand all the units in the existence, the nature, everything. And that is possible, it is doable just by looking within. And the process is just this, that we can look within, see what our feeling is, see if it is naturally acceptable or not, and then see what is the feeling that is naturally acceptable to me at that time, if I'm not having a feeling that is naturally acceptable at that moment. So if I have a feeling of opposition, I have an argument with somebody in the house or somebody at work, and I can see that I'm disturbed. I will also, or I can um, have the capacity to notice this feeling within. You will notice that when you are disturbed within, you are having a feeling that is not naturally acceptable. So at that moment, or even later, if I recall the incident, if I notice that I was feel I was having a feeling that was not naturally acceptable, then I can now see what kind of feeling I could have had, what kind of feeling would have been naturally acceptable. And perhaps the next time this, even if I do have a feeling of opposition at that time, I may be able to notice it sooner and sooner. And a time will come when I will have the right feeling, even though the other person may be having one of opposition. So this process may seem slow, but then any process of looking within will take time because we have been used to looking outside for so long. We have been used to assuming many things. Like we were mentioning in the environment, in the outside world, now we say the sun sets, the sun rises. These are all, um, if you see, this is how it appears to be. But through science and through what we have learned, we also know that this is not the case that it is the earth that is moving and so it appears that the sun is rising or setting and so on. So there are many such illusions we may have of the reality, some assumptions about the reality which are not necessarily how it is, how the truth is, how the reality is. So therefore we need this right understanding. And with that, we can have the right feeling in continuity. So therefore, this effort for looking within. So now we can see in this chart itself, as we explore, as we observe within, you will be able to see more depth in this same chart that we talked of 
in the workshop. Similarly, when we look at the activities, the feeling, the thought, the expectation, we can see this directly that these activities are going on in us continuously. We can also see that how we interact with other human beings, with the rest of nature, with all other units, that is how our recognition and fulfillment with these units is, is based on knowing and assuming. So we have a certain acceptance, like we were just mentioning, about the reality. So just like that illusion that we were talking about, about the sun setting and rising, Another uh, acceptance that we may have based on what we can see through the gross eyes is that every unit is separate from every other unit. Therefore, we may tend to see our relationship with some units, but not with all. And therefore, our recognition and fulfillment will be different for different units because we perceive them differently. But you can keep this possibility open that the reality is not necessarily what it seems. So when we get to knowing when we get to the right understanding, we may be able to see this connection, this relationship between every unit with one another because by then our competence would have grown enough to be able to directly observe even the space, which is the subtlest of all realities, which when we directly observe, we will be able to see this connection between each and every unit just by virtue of being submerged in space. Then we'll be able to see the relationship between each and every unit without anybody having to tell us. So if I will see the relationship, then I will certainly have a feeling of relationship all the time. So when my recognition and fulfillment is based on knowing, the acceptances that I make on the basis of knowing, then this recognition and fulfillment becomes definite. If I don't have this knowing or right understanding, and if I am basing my recognition and fulfillment on some acceptance, then there may be many, many acceptances and they may keep changing. I may assume one thing one day, tomorrow I may assume a different thing because somebody says something else or I read somewhere or I believe something else. So it keeps shifting, it keeps changing. So my recognition fulfillment also keeps changing. So my behavior is indefinite. So all this now we can directly see within ourselves. So we did this with the self. Now we are going to be working with the body also. Trying to directly observe within the body. So like the need of the self has to do with feelings. It has to do with being happy. The need of the body 
is something entirely different. The need of the body is for physical facility. So food, clothes, shelter, so on. And this is a need that we can say, we can see this directly, that this is not a continuous need. And it is easy to see, like we keep taking the example of the food. And you can see that this food that we keep giving to the body, we can't keep giving it all the time continuously. You need to give it a break because at some point the stomach gets full. Now you can't eat anymore. So you stop. So whatever food is required, similarly whatever other facility is required for the body, it is required in some limited quantity. So it is quantitative. Now this is a very different quality to the feelings in the self. Because with the feelings in the self, you can't quantify it. You can't say, I have a little bit of feeling of relationship and a little bit of opposition. Certainly your feeling can change from one moment to another. But you either have a feeling of relationship at any one moment or one of opposition. Opposition in the sense, you may not be angry, irritated, but you don't see the relationship at that moment. You see the other as separate from you. So, when it comes to the body, we may be able to see this, that the fulfillment of the needs of the body is by physiochemical things. The body doesn't have feeling as such. The feeling is in me. The body will be okay with whatever I tell it to do. But I am the one who becomes uncomfortable in so many situations, so I instruct the body otherwise. Similarly, the activities, if you look in the body, just as the need for physical facility is temporary, the activities in the body are also temporary. And we discussed this yesterday. And again, we can see this is in sharp contrast to the self, where these activities within us are going on continuously. So here again, we can see this difference in continuity. First, it was in the need. Now you can see in the activity. When it comes to the response, you can see that the body's recognition and fulfillment is always definite. It is not something that keeps changing. So it is not like today the body reacts differently to say food that is poisonous and tomorrow the body accepts poisonous food and is able to use it for nurturing. It can't happen like this. The recognition and fulfillment is very definite when it comes to the body and its interaction with the other units like the food and so on. But in the case of the self, we, as we discussed, our recognition and fulfillment keeps changing based on our assumptions. So, with all of this, we can see that these two entities are very distinct. They are very different from one another. 
but a coexistence that I have with this body, this whole coexistence of myself and the body, this is what makes me what we call a human being. So we have to consider these two distinct entities um, distinct and have the clarity of these differences in the two units. If we are aware of that, then we can go through life comfortably. But whenever we mix up the two, whenever we are confused and don't have clarity at that moment about the self and the body, we are likely to have various assumptions which may be very far from the reality. So we get mixed up. The deep-rooted assumption that this is who I am, the image that I see in the mirror of the body, if I go by that, then I get busy trying to get happiness through the body because I don't have the clarity that the need for happiness is in me, the self, not the body. And my need is continuous. So everything that is temporary, anything and everything that is temporary cannot ever satisfy my continuous need for happiness. So then I can slowly start seeing the significance of this right understanding and right feeling within me at all times. So we were discussing this yesterday and we asked if we can look at or directly observe the self and the body within us yesterday all day. And we had also asked if some of us, um, not only can we directly observe, but we can also share our observations today. For all of us, it is important to directly see within us, so that we can see, you know, all of this that is being said, you know, when we have the right feeling, we are fulfilled, we are happy. We can see this directly. Similarly, the, you know, what is going on in the body. Or, you know, we'll notice that um, small things, day-to-day -day activities, is our focus more on the body or is it more on the self? This we can try to directly observe for ourselves. Like we may be spending a lot of time cooking food. We may be spending a lot of time thinking about tasty food. Now, yes, the food is a requirement of the body. It is a need of the body. But the body doesn't care about the taste. It is me who is wanting to have good taste out of that food. So the body will get nourished even with food that is not tasty as long as it is nurturing for the body. But what about me? If I think that my happiness lies with this tasty food, if I am not able to see the right feeling within myself, 
then this happiness is lacking within me. When this happiness is lacking within me, then I start looking outside for this happiness. When I look outside for this happiness, then I have all this, you know. I try to get various sensations that um, I think will be pleasurable. And I keep doing this again and again and again. And from moment to moment to moment, I may keep trying to get this happiness through that sensation, even to the point that it becomes damaging to the body. Yet the body will not refuse. Sometimes we say, no, listen to the body. The body says this, the body says that. Is the body saying it? Or there are some sensations that I, when I'm aware, I read them. When I'm not aware, I ignore them or I don't read them. I don't pay attention to them. And therefore, I keep giving wrong instructions to the body. Instructions that are not so um, good for the body. So all this we have to um, try to directly observe within ourselves. Yes. So uh, today, if we can try to observe this uh, more closely within ourselves, not in others, but in myself, how my needs are different from the needs of the body how my activities are different from the activities of the body, how my response is different from the response of the body. In the small details, every day in our activities, in the food we are eating, in the way we interact with others, in the choices we are making, in all of this, if we can try to observe this today carefully, become aware of the self, the feeling in the self, and at the same time, also try to see what is going on in the body and how the two we can see as separate. My feelings, how they are getting fulfilled, how I am being happy when I have the right feeling and also noticing what is happening in the body. But we'll take more of this tomorrow. And uh, all day today, we'll try to observe this. And I'll also put some assignment in the group.